Hello everybody and welcome to the Disability and Jesus Sunday service for today, the sixth Sunday of the Easter season. I had planned this week to welcome you from our garden and to celebrate the fact that it was May, but of course being May in Britain it's hailstones outside so here I am inside. But despite the weather, despite the unseasonable cold, the warmth of our faith binds us together and it's good to be with you together though apart as we seek to listen to God, see what he has to say to us this week and offer our love to him and to one another. So you're very welcome whether you join us at the beginning, the middle or the end of today or whether it's at some point during the week, we are part of one another and part of God's church as we worship him together now. A moment to pause, to pray, yes, but also to ponder the things where we haven't quite got ourselves right. The things said or done or thought that shouldn't have been, or perhaps that should have been but weren't. Those things that distance us from our relationship and our friendship with God. Though we promise to be eternally faithful, sometimes it doesn't last very long. So as we ponder those things where we possibly could have done or said or thought better, we return to the Lord and we say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And knowing that God is a God of love, may God forgive us. May Christ befriend us. May the Spirit renew us and change our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you've renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The reading for today is John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that my Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Here's a couple of quotes for you. Jesus said, abide in my love. We thought a lot about that last week and Jesus continues that teaching today as he encourages us to love one another. And a quote from somebody else. Love is willing the highest well-being of your neighbour, and your neighbour is everyone. 
and that was said by a friend of mine who used to be a reader in one of the parishes where I served, a man called Arthur, who sadly is no longer with us here, but we'll see each other again, I know, one day. We, as the church, as the people of God, are called to live the love of God in response to God, because he has shown his love to us. He's shown us his nature, and we're called to reflect that nature to each other. But what, I wonder, do we actually understand to be the right way that we should express this love as we seek to follow Jesus, as we seek to be his disciples? It's easy to say that we should love one another, but what kind of people, what kind of church should that make us? Well, to answer that, we have to go back to what we're all about. At root, Christian life is all a response to the love of God, hopefully a joyful response in belief and trust to our God, whose generous and outgoing and self-giving love is his most obvious characteristic. God simply oozes love, overflows with love, outpours love as the very essence of who he is. It's not that God just so happens every so often to reach out to the world in love, it's that that's all God can do. Love truly expresses who God is at the very deepest level. When we think about what God is in relation to the world, when we look at the great God events that we remember from the creation of everything to the Exodus to the whole history of the Jewish people that we read about in the Hebrew Scriptures, from the dawn of a new creation in Jesus to its fulfilment when heaven and earth will be united together in the realisation of God's promises. When we see the decisive outworking of God's loving mission to the world and in the world, then we see love in action, willing our very highest good. And in Jesus, we see the embodiment, the enfleshment of that love, of that mission to the world. That love that surpasses all other love. The love that's willing to lay down his life for us and his friends. This is the context in which we belong to the church, in which we are the church, the people of God. This is the framework in which our discipleship makes sense, in which we respond to what God's been doing, what God is doing and what God will go on doing. This is where we find the impetus for the kind of church that we're called to be, the way we are called to respond to God and to his overflowing abundant love. As Tim B Dearborn uh, wrote famously, it's not that the church of God has a mission in the world, it's that the God of mission has a church in the world, and that's who we're called to be. So if we want to know what it should look like as we follow God's call on our lives, then we look to Jesus, Jesus the embodiment of God's love, of God's mission in the world. In his life, in his announcing of the kingdom, in his death, in his resurrection, in his ascension, which we celebrate this coming Thursday, in his lordship over all things, in all of it, Jesus gives our discipleship its shape and its direction and its character. We are the church, we are the people called to respond to this embodied love of God in Jesus through our own love, lived out in our own embodied lives in the world. We're God's people called to be rooted in Jesus through our baptism, our faith, our common life, fed and taught by him in word and sacrament, growing in knowledge of him through prayer, through contemplation, through loving service, entrusted by him with the task of continuing his kingdom work of new creation, putting his death and resurrection into practice in our lives and in our world, in anticipation of the day when all will be renewed, made new in him. That all sounds wonderful, and, if I'm honest, daunting. We need help, I think. We couldn't do that in our own strength. We can't live out the love of God by ourselves. We're only human. It's only by and through the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit that this can actually happen. Each of us, as Christ's disciples, is called by virtue of our baptism to live in Christ, 
to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to follow Christ and serve Christ in the power of the Spirit, and through that to show forth to the world the love of God that's within us, in our words, in our deeds, in our attitudes and our actions. Living out the love of God as disciples of Christ in the power of the Spirit is what we're about, offering ourselves, both individually and together, as a Eucharistic people, a people of thanksgiving, people who embody the praises of all creation, offering ourselves as people who shine with God's light and shine God's light into the darkness of the world, offering ourselves as signs of transformation, bringing signs of the new creation to birth and growing God's kingdom, revealing God's kingdom to the world. We're called, brothers and sisters, to live out the love of God in mission, because living out the love of God is mission. And as somebody else famously once said, the church exists by mission, as a fire exists by burning. We are the church because God loves us, but also because we join in with God showing his love to the world, God's mission in and for and to the world living out the love that Jesus told us to live out. Love one another, said Jesus. Abide in my love. The question is, what's our response to that? How do you, how do I put that into practice day by day? How do we put it into practice with the, pe the people that we find difficult? How do we put it into practice against the obstacles that we find insurmountable in changing the world for the better? How do we put it into practice in the face of what we know to be our own limitations and our own weaknesses? We draw on the power of the Holy Spirit. We draw on the unwavering love of God, the bottomless pit of God's love that can never be exhausted. And we draw on our fellowship together. We draw on the community of which we're part. We draw on the church. Our calling is to live God's love for each other and for the world. To, again, use a hackneyed phrase, to find out what God's doing and go and join in. When we do that, then we fulfil Jesus' commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Abide in my love. Let's think, each of us, today, this week, in the weeks and months ahead, what can I be doing to live out the love of God to the people closest to me, to the people among whom I live, to the community in which I'm set, to the world of which I'm part? How can we best live out the love of God and how can we best ensure that we remain connected to that great wellspring of love, which is God, in Jesus, by the Holy Spirit? It's my prayer that each of us will know ourselves firmly rooted and grounded in that love today and every day, and that each of us will shine with God's light, will show God's love, and will enable one another and many others to share God's life. Amen. Our prayers of intercessions, praying for ourselves and for others and bringing our concerns to God, are adapted from a We Worship book by the Iona community. At the end of each section of prayer, when I say the words, Lord, in your mercy, we say together, receive our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Let's pray. Let us pray for those who are hungry in this land, whose only kitchen is a soup kitchen, whose only bank is a food bank, whose only diet depends on luck and careful planning, whose only food is others' leftovers. Lord, feed your people using our skills and conscience, and from our politics and private lives, 
eradicate apathy to hunger. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Let us pray for those who are hungry in other lands, where economies are burdened by debt and cannot or will not respond to human need, where fields are farmed for our benefit by workers underpaid and underfed. Lord, feed your people, even if it means cancelling debts, shareholders losing profits, diners having less choice. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Let us pray for those hungry for justice, who document inequalities, demonstrate against tyranny, distinguish between need and greed, and risk their own safety in the process. May their sacrifice not be in vain, May we be counted in their number. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And friends, we hold each other in our prayers in this moment, in this space and this place. We bring our needs to God as individuals. We hold each other in this community, apart but together, and each other's needs to God. And we wait on him to answer those needs in his way and in his time. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And a blessing. May the peace of God that passes all understanding fill your hearts and minds with the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen.